Well, certainly a terrifying story on our Oregon coast. So Holden, before we get to your first forecast, what are some things people need to know about sneaker waves? So the big story is anytime we have these storms out in the middle of the Pacific, we have the chance of getting these sneaker waves. And we always use these terms, sneaker waves, rogue waves, and then you have tsunamis. Now, the big difference, uh, we're going to dive into this right now. So all in all, on the Oregon coast, we have kind of the king tides going on right now. So let's go ahead and go to graphics right now. We're going to take a look at kind of identifying the difference between these sneaker waves and uh, stuff out toward the Oregon coast. So the big story is anytime we get these big storms out toward the Oregon coast, they tend to create these sneaker waves. Uh, and the reason why is because we have uh, the storm system offshore it tends to push a lot of that surge right toward the Oregon coast. And the difference between sneaker waves and say rogue waves is sneaker waves occur right on the Oregon coast, whereas rogue waves tend to happen out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. They're random large waves that kind of extend from the overall flow. Now the big difference between this and say tsunamis is these these are generally only about 10 feet more than what we typically see from the overall surf. So for example, over the course of the past couple of days, we've had 20 foot surf and these rogue waves could be as high as 30 feet and these extend further inland than the general overall wave. So when you're going out toward the coast, you never want to turn your back on the ocean. These kind of extend a little bit further inland from the coast than those typical waves and this chance will continue to go all the way for the next couple of days as we're still dealing with the storm systems offshore and we are also dealing with uh, the king tides that are in place right now. 